This video, sponsored by, Envato Elements. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. Let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I am calling it Black Friday Banner. For making an Instagram post, I am using a square size that is 1080 by 1080. If you are going to create a desktop version, you can use the 1920 by 1080 resolution. I am using the frame rate of 30, and my duration is 10 seconds longer. Now create a new solid layer, I am calling it background. Choose any color you want, and then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the preset, and search for the gradient ramp. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the ramp shape to the radial ramp, and then click on this swap color button. If this button is not available in your After Effects version, then you can manually change the colors from here. I am using yellow color for the start, as well as this golden color for the end color. And this is how it looks now. Select the gradient ramp once again, and then grab the center point from the top, and place it right into the center of the frame. Also, grab this bottom point, and place it right here. And this is how the background will look. Cool. Let's move to the next step. Make sure to unselect your background layer, and then go to the tools, and select the pen tool. Here create a triangle like this. Just three points and we have a triangle. Let's adjust its size by dragging these anchor points. Then click on the fill, and choose a yellow color for it. You are free to use any color you want. Let's call it a particle. Then right click on this particle layer, go to the layer style, and choose bevel and emboss. Open bevel and emboss option, and change the technique to chisel hard. Also, change the size value to a higher number. I am using a value of 200. And this is how the particle will look now. You can play with the depth setting to make the depth better looking. Now open scale, and then adjust the scale value of it. I am keeping a size of 60%. Now select the move tool, and place the particle right here. Then press R, to open its rotation, and change its rotation value. Let's add some shadows to it. Right click on this layer, go to the layer style, and choose drop shadow. Then open the drop shadow option, and first, change the color of it. I am using orange yellow color. And also, change the size of it. I am using the size value of 100. It will make the shadow softer. Let's increase the distance value to around 90. And this is how it looks now. You can see the drop shadow has separated our particle from the background. Let's add some animation to it. Press P to open its position, and then press and hold the Alt or option key on your keyboard to add an expression on it. In this expression area, type wiggle, parentheses 1 comma 100. It will add some random moments in our particle. And this is how it looks now. Cool. Let's make more particles. Make a duplicate of your particle layer, by pressing the control plus D, or command plus D, and then place it right here. I am changing its rotation value to a different number. As well as the scale value to a different number. Let's make more particles. I am just making duplicates of the particles, and changing the scale and rotation value, to make the dynamic particles. I am fast forwarding this step to save your time. If you want, you can simply change the color of any particle by using the fill option. 
I am using black color for it. We have added around 8 particles, some of them are yellow, and some of them are black. You are free to use your own colors. I am just showing you the way, destiny is yours. In case you think some of the particles moving fast, you can always change the expression values to make it slower. For that, press E double time to open the expression, and then change the last value of it. Adjust the placement of the particles if you think. Now select all particle layers. Right click on it, and choose precompose. I am calling it particles and then hit OK. Now make a duplicate of the particle layer. Then right click on it, go to transform, and choose flip horizontal. It will align the particles to the right. Now open the scale, and change its scale value. As you can see, some of my particles are cutting down because of the precomposition option. But we can fix it just by clicking on a single icon. We need to click on this collapse transform icon. If this switch tab is not available here, press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is standing in line for getting its vaccine shot, then right click here, go to the columns, and choose switches. As well as modes because you are going to use them. Now turn on these collapse transform options, and it will fix this issue. I am also turning on this option for the bottom layer. And this is how it looks now. Let's adjust our layer position, and then make more duplicates of it. Adjust their position, and this is how it looks now. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast blur effect. Apply it to the layer, and then change the blur radius value to 5. Also, make sure to check on this repeat edge pixel. We are adding some fake depth of field in our particles. So it will give some depth into the scene. Let's quickly make more duplicates of the particle layer, and place them randomly. And this is how it looks now. Not bad, we will fix their speed later. Cool. It's time to add our text. Now go to the tools and select the text tool. Click here, and then add your text. Eject from the typing box, and then align it to the center. I am using the Montserrat font for it. You can download it from the link in the description. Let's choose the white color for it, as well as change the font size to 120 pixels. We need to align it to the center once again. Again go to the effects and the preset, and search for the drop shadow. Place it onto the text layer, and then change the shadow color to yellow color, and opacity value to 100%. Also, I am changing the distance value to 10. Let's change the color to a little darker, so that it will separate from our background. Now select this drop shadow, and make a duplicate of it. This time I am changing the color to a different color, it will be a more orange shade. Let's change the distance value to a lower number, and it will look much better. Now I am going to solo my text layer, so that only my text layer will be visible, nothing else. It will help us to quickly preview our animation, and save some time in processing. Don't worry we will unsolo this layer after making our text animation. Now click on this arrow, and here you will find this animate arrow button. Click on it, and choose a position. It will add this position property to our text layer, and we will use this position for animating our text. Let's change the Y position value to around 200 pixels. And then open this range selector. We will use the offset for the text animation. Let's change the value to 0%, then go to the first frame position, and then add a keyframe of offset. Then go to around 2 second position, and change the offset value to 100%. Check the animation, and this is looking a little slow and boring. Let's open advance, 
and change the shape value to ramp up. Now instead of one character at a time, it will move multiple characters at the same time. If you go to the first frame, you can see the text position has been changed, so again go to the offset, and change the offset value to negative 100%. And this looking much better but still slow. So I am going to place the last keyframe in one second position to make it a little faster. Cool. Let's change the least low value to 100% for achieving this kind of movement. Better. Now select all keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and select easy ease. And our text is looking much better. I am also adding the scale animation to it. Scroll to the top, then again click on animate, and choose scale. Now change the scale value to 0%, and then go to the 15 frames position, and add a keyframe on it. Go to around 10 frames forward, and change the scale value to 100%. Now easy ease both keyframes, and this is how our text looks now. If required, you can adjust the position of these keyframes by dragging them to the left or right. Cool. Now we are adding our next text layer. Select your text layer, and make a duplicate of it. Use the up arrow key to place it at the top position. I think the position will be better right here. Now I am going to replace the text of this layer as black, and using the font size of 70 pixels. Let's change the color to dark gray, so that the name matches its color. Now I'm going to unsolo the background layer, so that I can see my text clearly. Please note, I have not activated the particles yet. Let's change the color a little brighter, and this is how it looks. Now I am going to turn off this drop shadow effect from the black layer, because the text is already visible. Now change the font size to 90 pixels, to make it a little bigger. I am making one more duplicate, and placing right below of all layers. Now select all text layers, and press U to open keyframes. Align these layers according to their appearance, so my bottom text layer will be black. After that Friday, and then flat 70% off layer. Now place the starting position of each layer at a few frames further from each other, so that they will appear at different times. I am placing the 70% off text layer a little further, to make it appear after all the text layers. Let's minimize all layers. Select all of them, and turn on motion blur for all. Unsolo your text layer and this is how the design looks now. Make sure to fit it 100%, so that you can see the whole frame. If you like you can adjust the font size according to your requirement. I am increasing the text size to make it a little bigger, and placing them right into the center. Let's select the all text layer once again, and place their starting position on the 15th frame timing. Let's open our particle layer, then select all layers and press P to open position. Make sure you are at the 15 frame position, then add a key frame on it. Then go to around 0 frame position, and drag all the particles towards the center. Cool. Now select all keyframes, make sure to select the bottom keyframes as well. Then right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and choose easy ease. Now open graph editor, if required then press the plus key on your keyboard to zoom in. And then change the curve to something like this. In case your graph editor does not look like this, then right click here, and choose edit speed graph. Now switch back to the timeline, and turn on the motion blur of all layers. Switch back to the main timeline, and RAM preview this. 
This is how it looks now. I think the text should appear right behind these particles. So I am grabbing all my text layers, and placing them right below all particle layers. I think the particles are moving too much, so open the particle layer once again, unselect any selected particle layer, and then press E double time to open the expression block. Here change the wiggle value to 1,30, for all layers. It will make the movement a little slower. Switch back to the main timeline, and this is how it looks now. Looks much better. Now the only thing I need to do is place my text starting position a few frames before, so that it will appear right after the particles settle down. Let's adjust the timing and now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace. Design video products faster, with Envato Elements. Get unlimited download, After Effects template, stock footage, fonts, music files, web templates, and more. Visit the Envato Elements. Check the first link in the description.